Hi folks, Martin Ranscombe here. I'm very proud and honoured to say that I'm a long time artist for Vata, who of course make the best sticks in the world, that's why I use them. Ha! Anyway, I thought it'd be quite useful uh, for beginners perhaps, but even players of some experience, to have a look at how we go about choosing sticks. If you look at the websites of Vata or indeed any other major manufacturer, you'll see that there are literally hundreds of models to choose from. And especially if you're in the UK and in Europe, I'm not quite so sure about in the, in the States, but most of the shops sadly don't have the whole range in stock. So how do you actually get to try them? So how do we pick a stick? Well, the first thing to think about, I suppose, is what's comfortable. Uh, most drummers might say, well, it's just whatever is comfortable with my hands. I like that. I've always liked that one. That's the one I use. Well, that's kind of a shame because it's not really necessarily that straightforward. And also, you'll be perhaps stopping yourself from trying something that might even be even better for you. But like I said, it's difficult to get through the minefield, you might say, of trying to find out which one is actually going to work. Or should I say, which ones? I mean, I typically use three different models, which we'll come on to in a second different jobs and so on. But I should also explain at this point that my specialism, if you like, is in relaxed techniques and particularly injury prevention and rehabilitation. And one of the things that I've noticed a lot over the years with people coming to me to fix their problems, whether it be problems with their forearms, wrists, shoulders, technique in general, whatever, it's really struck me how many drummers have a stick type that doesn't really work for them. It might be that they've just used that particular model for donkey's years and they've never really thought about it. But of course I'm coming from this angle of actually looking a bit of a bigger picture than that. So one of the common things might be a guy who's really big, massive hands like, you know, a handful of Frankfurters and then got these tiny like chopstick drumsticks. And that can cause problems because if you're squeezing too hard at the front, something like that, and you've got a really thin stick, that can cause tension in your wrist and blah, blah, blah. But that's a whole different video. So often I will suggest a change of stick. The other thing that as my technique has improved over the years, I've ended up using heavier and heavier sticks. Now, I'm quite a small guy. <laughs> hey, I'll get in only certain ways. <laughs> um, but... Um, I've noticed I'm using heavier and heavier and heavier sticks. So I started out with what would be, I guess, something like a 5A-ish or even slightly lighter. But now I'm using 2Bs, particularly for practice, and 3As, 5Bs, that kind of weight for most of my playing. And that's because my technique has changed and the way I hold the sticks has changed, and etc., etc. Anyway, so let's just narrow things down for you a little bit. So at least you've got a chance of being able to perhaps go into that store and finding something that might at least fit into a category that you can work from. So very quickly, let's look at some of the basic concepts. Yes, there are hundreds of models out there, but actually, really, they're based around probably no more than a dozen basic types. And if you start from the, the lightest, which tends to be the higher number, so, for example, a 9A, then a 7A, and a 5A, 3A, 2, and so on, as you go up, or go down the numbers, I say, you go up the weights, typically. Most sticks are then derivatives of those particular models. A lot of the artist models you'll find in catalogues are really kind of 5A-ish, 5B-ish, that was certainly a lot around the 5A size, with little changes. So on that note, here's my trusty Vata Fatback 3As, which are my favorite stick for most things. Um, what I like about these is they're kind of, I suppose, between a 5A and a 5B roughly in, in thickness. This is the Hickory model, by the way. And, but it's got, a, it's got less of a taper at the top end, so it's a bit thicker, and it's a bit what I'd call front heavy. Now, I like that. But if you have a stick that's front heavy, generally speaking, they don't rebound as quickly, necessarily. So it does depend, as I said, on your technique and so on. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the 5A derivatives. So I've got various Vata models with me, which Vata very kindly sent over to, to me to try and to use. 
Um, but let's start off with the bog standard. So here we are, Los Angeles 5A. I don't know if you can see that, but there it is. So it's a kind of medium weight stick, has a very smooth, gradual taper, not too thin, not too thick, and an acorn head. That's a typical 5A. So that'll rebound quite well. And it'll give you a fairly full sound on cymbals and drums. But it's what you might call a, a, a in the middle stick. It's a kind of a, a general use for all kinds of things. And a lot of players, probably most players in the world, have used at some point or do use a 5A. I suspect it's the most common stick out there. Anyway, let's have a look at a couple of other options within the 5A range. First of all, the obvious one, which is a nylon tip. Now, a nylon tip stick has got the same profile and it's just about durability. Some players prefer nylon tip sticks, durable but harder. So they'll give you a slightly brighter sound, particularly on a ride cymbal. You're going to get more of a ping. Now, personally, I don't like that, never have. But there are lots of players who love them and there's nothing right or wrong about it. You just, whatever you prefer. But be aware that if you have a nylon tip, you are going to change the sound, particularly of your cymbals. We've got this uh, dipped 5A. So again, it's a standard 5A, but it has this dipped, coated you know, grip, if you like. Now again, personally, I, I don't agree with that kind of thing. Sorry, Vader, but you know, I'm not trying to be against the product, but that's just a personal choice. I like to feel just basic, you know, bare wood in my hands, as it were. And, um, but this is a dip, so if you, if you prefer something with a bit more of a tacky grip to it, um, then that will work for you. It's the same model, but of course it's going to change the weight of a slightly at the back end. So you might find, I mean I can pick that up now, I feel like it's, it feels like it's kind of light, heavy, at the, no, light at the front. Of course it's not really, it's just that it's an illusion caught created by that grip feel. Anyway, that's another possibility. Then we got this uh, newer model, much newer model, the Keg 5A, which has again the same basic profile to it, but it, the keg refers to the, the tip, which is kind of a flattened off barrel tip, if you like. So it's going to give you uh, slightly less ping on a ride, for example, because it's got flat sides, but it might be slightly punchier on drums. Uh, tips wise, that's a good point, let's talk about tips for a second. Uh, you'll see that there are four or five generic types of tip. You've got the acorn, the barrel, the round, and the kind of almost the the, the champagne flute. Oh, that's a bit posh. Champagne flute shape, the kind of real extended teardrop. Um, usually, the, basically, the round of the tip, the more punchy it'll be on drums. And it's fairly obvious, really, because it's got a sort of a harder, sort of rounder edge to it. Um, but it'll also give you slightly brighter on cymbals because you've got less contact. It's like a... If it's a ball, there's less of it hitting the, the surface. Whereas if you've got like an acorn tip here, that's going to give you more contact with the surface. So you might kind of get a slightly fuller sound on the cymbal. Uh, but perhaps less punch on drums, I find. Anyway, um, talking of which, here's a really good example, which is a kind of a 5A again. This is the Vata Jazz Ride. And you can see, hopefully, it's got a very, very tiny, very almost flush tip to it, a, a very much thinner taper, longer and thinner taper, so it's very back heavy, very light at the front, very whippy, uh, but this tip is very, very small and very thin. Now that is because, think about the job it's got to do. It's called a jazz ride stick, so that's all about having loads of tip contact. We're not looking for heavy, punchy drum sounds particularly. We want a nice, uh, contact with the ride in particular um, kind of brings out the more subtle overtones in that cymbal provided you've got the right type of course so but very light at the front so I personally would struggle to use that but actually it's really a five but we feel it looks like it anyway it's kind of a similar size and at this uh, in the shaft and the, and the main part of the stick these are all hickory models by the way I'm going to come on to maple in a second Right, let's go up the uh, let's go up the weight category. Um, so I'm going up to a 5B. I mentioned the 3A that I use, which is somewhere between a, a, um, a 5A and a 5B. Now I've got a 5B, a standard 5B. You'll notice much thicker in your hand, much thicker. Uh, similar sort of taper profile, but because it's starting thicker in the first place, then it's thicker at the end. And again, a sort of an acorny type tip. I hope you can see that. 
this is um, pretty heavy. I wouldn't want to use that for most of my playing. I would might find that a bit bit too much. But again, I'm only a small guy, so it depends again on what what size you are, what you're playing. Um, then we've got a 2B, which I use on a practice pad for warming up and practice. Um, just a note on that, a lot of drummers will tell you that they use a heavier stick for pad work or practice, uh, warming up and so on, than they do for actual playing. The school thought being that you work the muscles on the wrist particularly more and, and you know you kind of get warmed up that way. Um, I don't know whether that's really true or not. In my in my guise as a specialist in, in terms of healthy playing, if you like, and injury prevention, I can't, still can't tell you if that's necessarily true or not. I think it depends on how much you do it. All I can say is I only use the 2B on the pad. I don't use it around the kit. So it's getting maximum rebound and I'm totally relaxed. And my technique, by the way, is incredibly relaxed anyway. So there's no real strain. But, you know, some players are playing really heavy music and need the weight of the stick to help them get there. So that might be perfect for you. But if you're of a small build or a very light build, it might be a challenge. Might be. I do know a couple of very good players who are similar build to me, very slight, kind of whippy, if you like, uh, who use two Bs and they play beautifully. So you know, there's always exceptions. I know one or two players who are really big, thick set guys who play quite heavy and they're using a 7A. Ta da! Here's a 7A. This is the light stick. A lot of students start I recommend this to a lot of students when they first start out. It gives a nice balance, it's a proper stick, but it's light enough not to damage their wrists when they first start out. And then uh, we're going to get to the, the full extreme here. And I do not recommend you use this stick for playing drums for two reasons. One, it might be dangerous for you, but it might also damage your drums, particularly your cymbal. This is the 3S. Now, to me, uh, a euphemism for a log. Uh, it's, it's, for me, it's a pad stick, maybe, but particularly marching kind of weight. I mean, it's a real, look at the size of this thing. I mean, the, the, the tip on this is, is almost thicker than most of these sticks here. It's a huge thing. Um, I haven't been brave enough yet to try and use it regularly for practicing on a pad. I might just go for it and see what happens. But all my instincts suggest that it's not a great, great idea. But hey, it exists. It's there. Uh, all of these models pretty much, uh, certainly the standard models, are available in maple. So why would you choose maple? Well, the simple answer is maple is less dense. So you can get the same stick profile for less weight. So if you like a particularly happen to like a really thick stick in your hand, um, then uh, then you can get. Well, you don't want the weight. Then a maple is a really good option. But bear in mind, maple is less durable. The other thing applies, of course. You'll know that some companies do oak sticks, so that's more dense than hickory. So. Same thing applies in the opposite direction. If you have the same size, it's going to be denser and heavier, therefore, for that particular size. So just to recap then, and remember, I'm coming at this from the kind of the injury prevention, healthy, relaxed way of playing. I'm not saying that what I'm saying is right or wrong. It's just my opinions. But generally speaking, try to think of these things when you're choosing sticks. Comfort, yes, of course, is a factor. But think about your hand size. Think about the style of music you're playing. Think about how you play. Don't go copying your favourite drummer. The chances are you're not built the same. You don't play the same. The only thing in common is you might be playing music that they play. But that's about it. So don't necessarily go for a signature stick of your favourite drummer. OK, so go and find the one that is going to suit you. Because you're likely to lack the ability to choose every model, unless you're wealthy enough to buy a pair of everything off the website or something, in which case, good luck, have fun with that. Um, but like most of us, that's not reality. So um, yeah, just try and, try and use this to help you narrow down. Think about, as I say, what you play, how you play, how long you play is another one, um, and what size you are, the size of your hands, your technique, everything. And hopefully this will help you narrow down 
Most players are going to be somewhere in what we can't call the mid-region, sort of 5A up to 5B. That's just the way it is. Um, but have some fun. Try different one or two different models if you can, as many as you can within your budget and availability. Uh, and also be prepared, most importantly, to change, as I have done over the last 30 odd, 40 years, 40 years of playing. Yes, I know. Can't believe it. What, Martin? What did you start when you were minus five? Ha <laughs> ha! No, no, not really. Um, but uh, yeah, 40 years now. <laughs> um, so I've gone from very, very, very light to getting quite heavy now. Um, but I don't think I'm going to change too much now. Anyway, hopefully that's helped you. Um, check out the VETA website. They're all on there. And um, go down to your local store. Try out as many as you can. And if they don't have uh, much of a choice of VETA sticks, well then hassle them to improve it. See you soon.